And God said, if you f with my vision, I'm going to f Kim and Kanye's divorce drama is getting messier by the day. And the people who are like offended by it, it doesn't f matter. F you. If you're taught you can't do anything, you won't do anything. Mm. I was taught I could do everything. <laughs> and I'm Kanye West at age 36. If you're a Kanye West fan, you're not a fan of me, you're a fan of yourself. Passive like sends me a something I did. Yo, I love you, brother. Lift yourself comes out with him just talking nonsense. Kanye West had a busy few months. With the failed presidential campaign, recent divorce, and ongoing beef with Canadian rapper Drake, it's clear he has a lot in his mind lately. Given the circumstances and the fact that he's no stranger to delaying projects, a lot of fans didn't even expect an album this year. Talks about Donda started back in 2020 after cinematographer Arthur Jaffa revealed he was working on material for a Kanye new upcoming album. And since then, speculation, leaked songs, and listening parties at stadiums apparently hyped up the project to be Kanye's second second and best project since his newfound faith in God. Today I'm going to take you on a journey through Kanye's latest project Donda and give you a list of what I believe are all the tips and tricks you need to achieve not only an uplifting and almost holy sound, but also a hard, emotional or melancholic one, like the ones featured on Donda. Donda is a 27 track project filled with music mostly divisible into 5 main styles. First we have what I call holy. This is a group of tracks that share a somewhat similar vibe with uplifting chord progressions and usually featuring organs, big synths, and a bunch of layering. Then there's Sad, which are tracks that share a lonely emotional feeling, usually featuring a slow, spacey chord progression. Heart, which are the most trap-like songs of the album. Funk, which is pretty self-explanatory. And lastly, Space, which are tracks that mainly rely on a feature singing to carry the main melody. On this video, I will break down for you the construction of Sad, Holy, and hard songs. We will leave out both the funk and space ones because I didn't think that many of you are interested in learning how to produce funk. And also, like I mentioned earlier, the space category relies mainly on the singing of the guest star on the track, which I cannot replicate. With that said, these are the tips and tricks I'm going to deconstruct and explain to you in this video. Like I said, we're going to cover everything from holy to hard. So by the end of this, you'll have everything you need to start making Kanye West style music. If you'd like to have something handy to remember every chip and trick mentioned today, I created a file containing an ebook which has a simple step-by-step -step explanation of every technique shown in this video, along with the recommended presets and free plugins for each style. The file also contains every loop and one shot I created and used on the beats you'll hear next, along with a small drum kit filled with the basics you'll need to get started. Lastly, of course, I made sure to include the FLPs in case you want to see exactly how I mixed and arranged everything. The link to purchase it will be down in the description. If you're interested, the whole thing is only $3.99, but if not, that's totally fine. Don't even worry about it. So without further ado, here's how Kanye makes an album. The first song I'm gonna deconstruct is Off The Grid. Off The Grid is a hard-hitting trap song that later turns into a drill banger featuring Playboy Cardi and Fabio Foreign. This song features a simple and repetitive lead melody that plays with smart drum arrangement and octave switches to never get boring. This song fits into the hard category, so a lot of the tips in here also apply to songs like OK OK for example. These are the tips we'll go over during this deconstruction of the melody. As always, they will also be explained in the file in the description. You wanna start with a natural minor scale in a BPM of around 100. Now there are 5 steps to achieving a drill trap melody like off the grid, and those are simple dark lead melody, sound selection, chords, octaves, and switch. Step 1. Simple dark lead melody. For this step we're looking for something very simple and catchy that also sounds evil. Here you can see off the grid's lead melody midi. Here are 3 things I think are worth mentioning. They leave a bunch of space open playing their notes mainly at the end of the bar. This helps build suspense in dark beats, so keep that in mind. 2. They start down, then go up, and then back down. This simple movement is common in trap beats and very effective when you want to achieve that simple catchy sound. And 3. The melody is only one bar long and it repeats. By this point, I've told you about repetition in trap melodies way too much, so just know to make your melody either in one or two bars with small changes if necessary and repeat it after that. So with those 3 tips, I build this lead melody. As you can see, I used my silences in the beginning of the bar, used a similar down, up, down movement, and lastly, I let it repeat. Another trick is to use the half step separations you have in your scale on the down beats. By that, I mean this small separation your scale has between notes. This helps your beats sound darker, for example, if you were to place them after each other on the down beats like this.
Try that at the beginning of your next dark beat, I guarantee it will feel darker. Step 2. Sound selection. Now, when I listen to Off The Grid, I feel like it uses an EQ'd synth that kinda sounds like a flute. I don't want the exact same sound, but I definitely want something similar, so I started with the Enchanted Flute preset on Omnisphere. I bounce it and cut the high end and added some chorus to make it bigger and a bit of saturation to make it crunchier. After that, I added a simple sine wave copying the same MIDI and added the same effects to it. If you want this one shot, it'll be included in the one shot section on the file in the description. Step 3. Chords. Now, the lead melody alone would sound too empty. We need something to go with it. And like Off The Grid does, we're going to add some soft pad chords. To get the chords, simply copy and paste your lead melody into a soft pad. Now, simply assume this is the root note and try to figure out using your scale which notes are the third and the fifth. As you know by now, every triad chord has a root, a third, and a fifth, all separated from each other by either a major or a minor third, which basically means skip one diatonic note. So with that in mind, here we can easily find our fifths here. Now all we need is the thirds, and to find them, we simply must find a third in here, which is either a three or four note separation. So that's here. Also remember to move the thirds up one octave to make this sound more natural. The one shot for this will also be in the file in the description if you want it. Step 4. Octaves. Now that we have the main melody, we need to make sure that this won't get repetitive or boring. So a good trick is to play with the octaves of the melody. For example, I could simply pitch the lead up by one octave for the drop like this. Or try and add a halftime effect for the intro. Both these techniques help our melody never get too repetitive. Step 5. Switch. Now, as you know, Off The Grid incorporates a switch from trap drums to drill drums. To get that effect, here are the key changes you'll need to make to your drum progression. 1. Instead of making your hi-hats hit on every two steps, add a progression that looks like this, with these separations here and smaller ones here. Now move your second snare or clap one beat to the right. And lastly, make your 808 hit end when the snare hits and add some slides at the end of the bar. And with that done, all that's left is to arrange this thing. If you want to know how I did it, well, here it is. Hurricane is easily the most popular song of the album so far. It features a simple, holy-ish chord progression that progressively gets more and more intense along the weekend singing. This fits into one of the holy songs of the album, so even though this is a Hurricane melody deconstruction, a lot of these tips also apply to any of the songs in this list. These are the tips we will go over during the deconstruction of this melody, as always, they will also be explained in the file in the description. You want to start with a major scale and add a BPM of around 160. We're using a major scale in this case because we're going for more of a hopeful energy. Now there are five steps to achieving a holy melody like Hurricane, and those are hard sub bass, holy chord progression, sound selection, simplification, and layering. Step one: hard sub bass. Now Kanye loves to use a nice hard sub bass. You'll hear it in about half of the songs in this album. Hurricane also features one, so let's make our own sub bass. For that, I'm going to transform this crunchy bass one shot into this nice sub bass. 
The one shot for this is also available in the file in the description if you want it. To do that, I simply added some EQ, chorus, saturation, and lastly, a bit of distortion. Step two, holy chord progression. To deconstruct this, I think it's important to first recognize what makes this chord progression sound holy. So I reconstructed Hurricane's melody. Don't worry, we'll go into sound selection later. For now, let's just take a closer look at the MIDI. This chord progression is a 4, 2, 6, 7, 1, 3 progression. It changed a bit the 7th chord because with this note in the right spot, it would be a diminished chord and those don't sound very good at all. But aside from that, it's a pretty straightforward chord progression. Three things you should be able to tell right away are 1. The whole progression has a sense of ascending to it, which may be because of the inclusion of a 7 chord close to the end of the bar. These chords have tendency notes which make the chord progression feel like it wants to keep going, to resolve. Also, a 3 chord, which is right at the end of the bar, usually wants to resolve to a 4 chord. So that is why when the pattern loops over, this feels so nice to listen to. So keep in mind to play with tension and release at the end of the bar. 2. This upward movement also helps add to the uplifting energy of the melody. And lastly, the 7s on top of the chords sound prettier than a simple triad chord would. So with those tips in mind, let's build our own holy chord progression. Like in Hurricane, I'm going to start our progression on a 4. Now, to keep an ascending feeling, I'm going to do the obvious and make the next chord a 5, which is the next upward chord. Now after this, I'm going to add a 3 chord that doesn't usually sound very good after the 5, but here I'm trying to set up the tension for the next bar. Now look at this, in Hurricane's original melody, they used a 3 chord right before the pattern looped over to a 4 chord. In this case, we also have a 4 chord in the first bar, but we won't be using the 3 chord here. Instead, I'm going to add a descending 6, 5 and then 4 progression. This also works well and gives our melody a feeling of release. So here are a few tips I think you might find useful when playing with chords like this. 1. 3 usually sounds good when resolved to a 4. 2. 6, 5 usually also resolve nicely to a 4. A 5 and a 7 chord resolve nicely to a 1. And lastly, a 5 chord is a chord with the most tension to it. Step 3. Sound selection. For the sound selection, we're going to start with an organ. I'm using the Boombox Vibrato Organ Preset on Omnisphere, and I'm also layering with a sub bass. Now, for a richer mid-range, I recommend you add one or two soft pads playing the same MIDI. This is what all that sounds together. Step 4. Simplification. Now we want to add chill drums to this next part, but sadly organs get annoying really fast. So what Hurricane did, and what we are going to do as well, is to simply take it out and rely on the pads and 808 to fill the space left by the organ. By the way, all these drum one-shots are going to be available in the file in the description if you want them. Step 5. Layering. Now Hurricane also adds more and more intensity to the track to the point where when paired with the Sunday Service Choir and the Wiccan's voice, it feels massive. So let me show you a way to achieve that. 1. Slow build-up. First, I added another pad in the middle of the beat so that the new layers don't feel like they came out of nowhere. It's kind of getting your ears ready for change. 2. Fade in extra organs. Then I brought back our old organ along with a slowly increasing volume second organ. This will give it a nice added feeling of intensity. 3. Transition effects. Then I added this riser so the move from this to this doesn't feel unnatural. 4. Big choir. And lastly, I added the female all preset on X-Band 2, playing our MIDI but in two different octaves at the same time. This is gonna give it that massive feeling. And with that, our buildup is done.
Praise God is one of the harder songs of the album. This hard, dark track features a sample choir along with hard drums, with verses of Travis Scott and Baby Keem. These are the tips we'll go over during the deconstruction of this melody. As always, they will be also explained in the file in the description. You want to start with the BPM of around 140, since this is the standard trap tempo. Now, there are four steps to achieving a chance melody like Praise God, and those are finding the sample, chopping the sample, adding layers, and intro. Step 1 finding the sample. Now there are a few known places where you can find any sort of sample like YouTube or third-party plugins like Arcade, but my favorite place to find royalty-free samples is Looperman.com. Here you can find thousands of samples and they're all royalty-free. They didn't pay me to say this by the way. Now that we have the sample, we can move on to step 2, chopping the sample. For that, the way we usually do it is by pulling up Fruity Slicer, then adding our sample and setting this to cut on every beat. Now just play around until you find something you like. This is what I came up with. Now to make that more trap-like, let's bring this down a few semitones and add some transition effects. Now before we can move on to step 3, we need some drums. So I added a simple hard drum progression with some 808 slides. If you want the samples, they will be in the drum kit section in the file in the description by the way. And now to add a bit of variation to this, we need some chords. Step 3. Adding layers. To add tension to a trap melody, it's common to build our chords in an ascending progression. So what we want is to find the first note of our sample, which in this case is B, and then using our minor scale, find a diatonic ascending simple progression like this. And lastly, for the intro, Praise God introduces the song with a sample speech from Donda West. In this case, I want to start in a darker way, so I added a regular gospel choir sample, which then tapes up into a Joker sample, which introduces our main melody. Listen to this. Donda features a slow emotional piano progression along with Kanye West singing in a Donda West sample. This is one of the only sad songs of the album, which means that I finally get to use the piano preset on laps, which is a free plugin by the way. You want to start with a natural minor scale and a BPM of around 87. Now there are three steps to achieving an emotional melody like the one on Donda, and those are sad chord progression, layers, and sub bass. To start off, let's take a look at Donda's original piano progression. Here you can see three main things. One, this leaves almost two bars empty, with all the chords mainly being played at the first two bars. And two, the inclusion of one beat long chords. This small chord here right before the downbeat is a common trick to add character to an emotional progression. It helps keep the pattern somewhat empty, which like we discussed, adds suspense and a melancholic feeling while not leaving the pattern with only two chords. And lastly, the fact that this progression is going down, again a very common technique on sad melodies. And this one is not only going down, but 
whilst also applying my favorite sad melody creation method, which is the 1-6 method. This simply means putting the 1 in 6 chords on the downbeats. I often do this and it never fails to get an emotional feeling. So let's try to keep those three things in mind while we create our own progression. I'm going to follow Donda's formula and place my chords mainly at the beginning and end of the bars in a descending progression. So let's start on a 1. And then, here I'm going to add my beat long chords. In this case, I want to add 2 instead of 1. But still, this is very standard for emotional piano melodies. So descending progression and then let's land on a 3. Now, usually a 1 to 3 progression doesn't sound very good. But that's where these two chords come in. They are meant to function as a bridge between this and this chord while giving the progression more character. This might take you some time to figure out, but don't worry, just remember your steps and keep trying. Also, don't be afraid to go out of the chord if the notes are not sounding right. Here I took this note up by a half step, even though this kind of ruins this chord. But who cares if it sounds better this way? Now, as always, remember to bring the thirds up an octave. Now, I want to make this pattern a full 8 bars. Trust me, it'll sound beautiful in the end. Let me show you a simple trick to get satisfying chord progressions without much work. To continue this, I decided to simply use this chord two more times, like this. But that sounds kinda dumb, right? Why would I simply play the same chord three times? Well, that's where our trick comes in. And this trick has two parts. The first one is to change the transition beat long chords, which are this ones. Simply add whatever sounds good to you, but I recommend to add the contrary motion to the one before it. By that I mean this one was going up, so the next one should go down. Down. And the second part is called the voice leading hack. This is a simple trick I found to make new chords out of old chords by moving just one note, the fifth. To do this, all you need is to move your fifths off by one note on the scale. This ruins the chord it used to be, but transforms it into a new chord that is almost guaranteed to play well after the last one. You see, a chord is built by thirds, one here and one here. If you move this, then this is no longer a third. But here's where our hack comes to play. Because if you move our old fifth down one octave, you'll find that the thirds are now here, making this an entirely new chord with simply the root one octave higher. Moving the root one octave is usually done in voice leading to make transitions between chords less jumpy. And that's how I found this hack. So next time you're out of chord ideas, try moving the fifth up one step and you may be surprised. Next up is the layering in the sub bass. For this, I'm simply going to use the sub bass and the pads from the one shot kit in the file in the description. Lastly, I'll add the same Donda West sample Kanye West added on Donda, and with that done, here's the final beat. As one writer said, we came from somewhere, not just from the wombs of our mothers and the seeds of our fathers, but from a long line of forefathers, of foreparents, generations who came before us. In the book Raising Kanye, I did not go back to ancient Africa where it all began, but I did begin with the story of my parents, Port Wood and Lucille Williams, who were victims without becoming victimized. Lord I Need You is the second and last emotional song from this album. This features a sample taken from the video of the beautiful singing from Brianna Baby No. I, I think, I'm sorry if I'm butchering that.
This is actually my favorite song from the album, so I'm very excited to share with you some of the secrets this track has. First, let's get the obvious out of the way. The sample. Where are we possibly going to find another sad, passionate sample such as this one? Well, the answer may surprise you. It's TikTok. There's a ton of samples on TikTok. People just upload themselves collaborating or simply just creating music on their own under various hashtags like musicians of TikTok or singers of TikTok. I haven't seen anybody talk about this, but really just look. After a quick one minute search there, I found this amazing sample from this creator. I don't know why you say you wouldn't hurt me. Don't even try. Tell me was it worth it. So now that we have our sample, let's get started. There are three steps to achieving a sound like Lord I Need You and those are manipulating the sample, interpolation and layering. Step 1. Manipulating the sample. Now this sample sounds great, but like you may see here it does not quite fit our grid. Luckily for us, FL recently introduced their new tool Time Warper. So right click on the sample and click on Time Warper to get started. After that, simply recognize the downbeats and move them to the right place and now this is on grid. After that, I like to either move the sample a few semitones up or down. This helps keep the sample's voice and the singer's or rapper's voice separate. Step 2. Interpolation. This step refers to the copying of the notes played on the original sample so that we can take it out eventually and just play the chords without the voice. Lucky for me, the video also included the notes, but if you're not so lucky, let me give you a few tricks. Start by playing the root notes along with the sample. This is the notes that sound like they definitely are a part of the chords played in the sample. For this one, just use your ears. Tip number 2 is to add the fifths. Now that you have these root notes, simply count 7 notes up and add the fifths. Since all major and minor chords have a seven note separation between root and fifth, they should pretty much always work. And now you're left with two options. The first one is if adding the fifth worked and it sounded good, then simply try adding a major or minor third below it and boom, there are your chords. Option B, if adding the fifth didn't work, then that probably means you added the thirds instead of the root. Don't worry, that happens to me all the time. To fix that, simply add another third one octave down and try adding one extra note in the middle of this that also sounds good with the chords until you find at least one. Once you've found it, simply check if that is the root or the fifth and then add the missing one using your scale. If you did those steps correctly, you should be left with a progression that sounds pretty much identical to the one in your sample. Step 3. Layering. This step is much simpler. We want to make the piano sample sound less dry, so to fix that I'll simply add some pad one shots from our file and paste the same MIDI to them. A piano sounds good with pretty much any soft pad, so don't stress too much about this one. And lastly, I'm going to add a few extra ear candy pieces like adding a pitched up version of the sample in this nice box one shot. And with that done, all that's left is to arrange this thing. And here's how I did it. Come to Life is another one of Kanye's holy songs, but this one is different in the fact that this time the instruments do pretty much all the heavy lifting here. There are no drums, no features, just a lot of layering with Kanye's vocals, which adds up to one of the most heartfelt songs of the album. This song has two main parts connected by a distorted synth that is used to intensify the impact of the instruments. So let's learn how to do that. You want to start with a major scale and a BPM of around 160. Now there are four steps to achieving a holy melody like the one on Come to Life. 
and those are simple soft holy melody, layering, layering slash transition, and piano. Step one, simple soft holy melody. Now, unlike the name suggests, this step isn't really that simple, so let's get into it. For some reason, I've found that starting a progression on a four chord is a great way to help us achieve that holy sound in the end, so let's start with that. And then I wanna show you a little trick. When you already have the chord and don't know where to take it next, a little hack for you is this. Use either the two top notes of your chord or the bottom two. By that I mean, if you wanna go up after your chord here but you don't know how or you've tried a few options and they don't sound really good, simply copy these top notes like so. Now simply add a third on top of that and there you go. A new chord guaranteed to sound good when played after this one. And on the other hand, if you want to go down, just use the bottom two and add a third below it. using your scale. In this case, I like the second one better, so I'm gonna keep it like this. And for this last two chords, I'm gonna give you one of the earlier hacks I gave you. Remember how I said six, then five result nicely to a four chord? Well, let's do just that. But we're not done yet. These are just some regular chords. We're looking for something that's gonna make you have an out of body experience or something, so let's keep going. Now for this part, we're going once again to abuse the principles of voice leading. Voice leading is basically imagining that each line of notes, be it the top, bottom, and middle ones, are all going to be sung by a different person. Now, the objective is to make this person's job as easy as possible, which means we have to use octaves to make this progression less jumpy. Let me explain. Person A is going to sing this notes, but as you can see, they would first have to do a big jump jump down and then a big jump up. It would be easier if they could just do this. And now there are no jumps anymore. That's how voice leading works. And it helps us make chord progressions sound more natural and less jumpy. Now to abuse this, I want to add a bunch more octaves but without deleting the old notes. Usually in voice leading we simply move the notes, but in this case we'll be adding notes, one octave up or one octave down to achieve a fuller sound. And since we're going for a holy vibe, I'm going to abuse the voice leading principles to make this chord progression go up. This is what that looks like. I added octaves here, then up here another one, then up here another one down here, and lastly, here I also used our fifth tag I showed you before to create new chords out of old ones, but in this case I also didn't delete the old note. These are still pretty much all chordal notes by the way, which means we didn't change the chords, we just added to them. This is a good trick to get fuller sounding chord progressions without making it too complex. Step two, layering. Now, I've told you about the principles of layering before, but let me tell you again. What we're looking for here is a massive sound. And the way to do this is to add layers, keeping in mind what they are contributing to the frequency range. As you can see with this preset I'm using right now, we have a bit of this area covered. The preset is called Female All from X-Band 2, by the way. We want to cover as much of this as reasonable, so to start, let's go a bit more on the low end. For that, I'll add the sub bass we created earlier. and the lower octave pad. Both of these one shots will be available in the file in the description by the way. Now let's move on to the mid-range. For that I'm going to add these three new layers, all soft pads playing the exact same MIDI. As you can see, now we're covering a lot more ground in terms of mid-range. You don't always need this many layers, by the way, just add them slowly and see if they're adding or taking away from your goal using your ears. That might take a few tries, but you'll end up loving the result. Step 3. Layering slash transition. For this part, we're looking for some high-end frequencies. This will make our melody feel massive and complete. The final step before we can transition all of this tension into a piano playing new MIDI. For that, I took a page out of Kenya's book and decided to go with synth pads and strings. These three, to be exact.
And with that, as you can see, the frequency range is looking very nice. Step four, piano. And for the last step, Come to Life uses a happy, very energetic piano. In this case, I want to go for more of a melancholic vibe. So for that, I'll simply add the chords from our melody and add a simple top progression. For that, I'm going to use a simple, commonly used trick, which is to add an upwards mix of choral and non-choral notes. This means basically to just add notes going up and following the notes from our scale like this, and then some descending ones like this. And lastly, some octaves to make this heavier and done. Now all that's left is some arranging and transition effects. And here's how I did that. And with that, we've come to the end of our journey. Thank you so much for sticking with me, this has been great. Remember, if you want to know how I mix this or want the one shots I use, they will all be in the file in the description. As a thank you for watching this far and supporting my channel with that sweet, sweet watch time, I want to give you the ebook that contains a step-by-step -step explanation of the trick shown in this video for free. So if you want it, just DM me the word Donda on Instagram and I'll give it to you for free. If after that you still want the other content from the file, I'll give you a download link to that with a discount, since you would no longer be paying for the ebook since you would already have it. Again, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy life to learn a bit of music with me. Stay tuned for new album deconstructions coming soon and with that said,